Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I told you that we're gonna be doing 488s next, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We've got 488 fronts, 488 rears, and the rears have an LSD in it, so it's a little added bonus. Uh, this one, right here, uh, it's used. You got it from Junkyard. Pretty self-explanatory, nothing too nice. It's kind of dirty, but oh well. It is a 488 front. And if you guys are looking for one of these, you're looking for a 92 to a 95 Forerunner Tow Package V6. And you can score a pretty good deal at a junkyard. I think they're only like 250 depending on what junkyard you go to. And uh, it definitely saves you a lot of money than buying them brand new. But I cannot say that same thing for the rears because I bought this brand new with the LSD. Like everything is brand new. This thing is spick and span, no oil. I mean, I could probably never say that for any of the other parts on the truck, but uh, it's pretty nice. And I can't wait to see what this LSD can do off-road. So we got the Forerunner over here. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna start with the rear first because that's probably the most important one. And if we don't get everything done today, at least I can drive with 488 rears and then the front, you know, we could just do another day or something like that. So we're trying out some new drinks today. Uh, we gave them Nectar a try. Uh, it's like an Asian White Claw. And uh, it's all right, except for the Yuzu flavor. That stuff is pretty garbage. We're gonna be putting Valvoline uh, 7590 in there. This stuff is expensive. It was like $120 for just four quarts. I mean six quarts. Alrighty guys, so we got both axles out. I know I'm kind of skipping ahead, but you know, you all want to see us take off wheels. How many times have I made a video about that? I didn't know that all this fluid is going to leak, so don't get us for environmental hazard over here. But you know, we're just staying in the wood. Look how dull it looks. You know, it's, it's just not nice. So we're staining it up. It's going to look real nice after, just like I did staining my wallet, dumping my wallet in oil. It works every single time. So, yeah, but we disconnected the brake line, the uh, parking brake, pulled out the axle, and uh, we're getting to the uh, third member over there. So, clogged it so it's not leaking anymore, but this drive shaft is being a big old pain in the big old butt. And, uh, yeah, so we did the other side, and uh, we're getting it out. And after that, all we gotta do is pull the third member out, stick the new one in, put the oil in, and bam, we got 488s. This is definitely going to help me drive down the highway. I won't have to stay at 60 miles per hour anymore. And you know, I just gotta love that. Going only 60 miles per hour just sucks. But uh, yeah, you know, we're getting her done. Oh, there it goes. I don't think there's too much left in there. <laughs> you know, I'll leak out the, uh, the side there. Took the old one out, kinda, kinda gave it a good old scrape. And uh, yeah, we put the new one in. It is a big pain to put that thing in, it is heavy. But uh, yeah, I might not have kids anymore, but at least I got a 488 diff. And so here we are with the new 488s in the rear. And in the front, we got the new 488s up there too. Yeah, we skipped the whole install process in the front because it took us like four or five hours of readjusting, trying it again, readjusting and trying it again. Once you get the mounts on, it's a piece of cake, but uh, lifting the thing is kind of heavy and especially on your back, uh, it takes a little time to get the right position in. But once you do, it's a piece of cake. So now that we got the 488s in, we can move on to the next thing we're gonna be doing, and that is a new radiator. So probably in the north, the stock radiator is fine, but not in Texas, not uh, all the way at the bottom of the US, and right now it's like 103. Whenever I drive this thing, it kinda gets past middle, sometimes even gets close to red. I don't know if it's just my temp gauge or if it's just a radiator, but nonetheless, a better radiator is always a great mod to install. From factory, I don't know if this is factory, probably not, because it looks pretty new, but this is a piece of turd radiator. Uh, from factory, you have a two core radiator, and you see all this space right here for the mount? All that space is gone with the new CTS 2306 radiator, which is right here. These right here are the mounts to mount it to the car, and as you can see, it fills up that whole entire space. So not only will my car probably have better temps, but it might even make the AC better because of the better temps of the engine. So I'm excited for this nonetheless, and uh, this would definitely be a great mod if you're looking to lower the temps and you're in a hot place. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna fit completely, you know, just one-to-one, plug-and-play, 
uh, because it's kind of iffy on the internet. There's two different radiators you can get from CSF that supposedly fit this car. One is the 2314 and the other one is the 2306. The 2314, I guess, is a little bit smaller and uh, it doesn't fit up with a fan shroud. This one behind me supposedly fits perfect and we're gonna figure that out today. But here is the new one. I'll give you a closer look of it. Um, it has two ports at the bottom for an automatic transmission cooler. I blocked those off. You can go to AutoZone and get an assortment pack of these bad boys. Uh, six bucks and that plugs that hole and then I got a little uh, metal clamp to go around just in case. But the rubber ones are pretty snug. So let's get to taking out the old one and installing the new one. So to take this out, there are four bolts. One right here I already took out. Another one down there past that hose. And, and then two over here on the opposite side. Not too hard. What I did to flush this out is there used to be green coolant in here. I don't really want that because I want to keep it standard throughout all my cars. And all of them take red, except this bad boy. So we're going to swap it out for red. And before I did that, I also put the Press Stone cooling system cleaner in there. So when I drain it, there's probably going to be a bunch of junk in it. I got all of these bolts out. You think there'd be four, but the last owner did the fourth bolt delete, so uh, that's great. I'm gonna have to find one in my random bolt box, but uh, I think we're gonna yank this off. Maybe do some yanking over here. Come on, yeah, there we go. Get that out of the way, and uh, now it's time to drain the coolant, or I should say the water, plus the cooling system flush, press stone stuff and uh, see how dirty it is. By the way, for reference, I ran this for about an hour, um, so not too long. The heavy duty cleaning said three to six hours, and a light cleaning is 10 minutes. So I did compromise in an hour. I feel like that should be good. And it looks like it did nothing, because it's just water. So I'll set you all on top of the 8.6, and uh, I'm gonna take out the radiator. For reference, this is a two core radiator. We'll put it right beside the three core. And um, you know what? They don't look too much bigger. Let's see. So it's about the same length and height, but uh, that one is definitely a lot thicker. We'll do the finger measurement uh, right there and right there. So it has a lot more on both sides and uh it's nice and shiny you always like nice and shiny things so yep this one is out and the next test we need to do is make sure the fan shroud fits and look at that perfect 2306 is definitely the one to get not 2314 so i set y'all up again time for the new one So happy that they make a radiator that's better. So this is actually the V6 radiator uh, matched to the 22RE. This should cool the 22RE a lot better. So now that I got the new radiator in and the fan shroud all bolted up, I took off the thermostat. I'm gonna put a funnel in here and I'm just gonna pour some distilled water in here. Should pour at the bottom just to make sure there's no green coolant left in the engine bay. Trusty dusty funnel. And it looks pretty clear to me. So uh, we're all good to seal her back up and put the new coolant in. Even when it's maintenance part, it still makes me so happy to put a new shiny part in. And uh, look at that new black radiator. It matches right with the grill. I mean, what more could you want here? So far I'm loving it and I haven't even used it. One tip that I've learned is always place the second valve on the thermostat down. Uh, some people say it doesn't work, some people say it does, but if some people says it does, you know, why not do it? Just for precaution. Boom. I've been working out, let's do it. No, it's no go. Now for the final thing to do, just plug in this hose. That's good enough. Sneak that bad boy over. And boom, just like that. New CSF, I think it is. 2306 radiator in. Let's fill it up bleed it and see how well it does on the road. Plus, we'll try out the new 488s. 
So guys, uh, we got the 488s in and the new radiator and uh, no more overheating for the most part. And uh, well, let me clarify that. No more overheating engine side, but the gauge is kind of wonky sometimes and it says it gets up there, but it's not really up there. So I count that as a win. And the 488s finally can drive 70 miles per hour and you know still feel like I got something left in it. It's not you know maxing out at 60. I feel like I have torque on the lower end and uh, it's just a lot smoother of a ride. You're not always having to push a car and uh, it feels a lot better. It feels like it was from factory. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe down below. We're gonna be doing more miles to the 4Runner, the 8.6, uh, and whatever other car I get. So uh, see you guys next one, peace out.